Hey, what's up, footballers? As you all know by now, the PES 2016 demo was released on August 13. For the past two weeks, I've been playing a lot of the PES 2016 demo in between fixing the technical issues that have prevented me from making and uploading new videos. That's right, this video was supposed to be up on the 14th. But hey, here it is! I got some gameplay for you, which by now I'm sure you're all familiar with, but more importantly, footballers, I have my impressions, thoughts and ideas about the PES 2016 demo and I'm going to share them with you today and in returns, I'm hoping that you guys are going to drop a few comments and let me know what you think of the PES 2016 demo. So footballers, there are four things that are going to happen in this video. First, I'm going to set up a few pre-game preferences like my controller's buttons, change the cursor so that it will display the player's names, select the teams, pick the difficulty versus the computer, pick the starting players, and so on. And then finally, I will start the game. Second, while I'm playing the game, I am going to give you my impressions, thoughts, and ideas about the PES 2016 demo. But I am going to approach it from a different angle, footballers. And what I mean by that is, that I'm going to start from what wasn't working in PES 2015 and then tell you, as far as I can tell, if it has been improved in PES 2016. Third, I'm going to talk about what I would really love to see included in future iterations of PES. And with that in mind, footballers, what I would really like you to do is to drop a comment and let me know what you would like to see improved or added to future iterations of PES. And the reason why I'm asking you to do this, footballers, is because once I have a good number of constructive comments, I will go on my Twitter account and tweet at the official PES account to let them know that my subscribers slash viewers and I have a little feedback for them in regards to PES. So you know what this means, right? We need to be professional and constructive with our criticism. We absolutely cannot be using those very colorful three and four letter words that sometimes I like to refer to as sentence enhancers. And finally, footballers, at the end of the gameplay slash impressions, I'm going to give you my rating for the PES 2016 demo and it will be on a scale from one to 10. Let's do this. So footballers, I think France versus Brazil on Superstar difficulty should be a good game. I just need to make a couple of adjustments to the lineup and the player settings and then I'll get the game started here in a few moments. In the meanwhile, footballers, let's talk about the issues that PES 2015 had and whether or not they've been addressed in PES 2016. For me, footballers, the number one issue that PES 2015 had that I found to be the most annoying was the massive amount of online gameplay lag that I would encounter while trying to play online. What I'm talking about here, footballers, is that 90 to 95% of the times that I was trying to play online seasons, my club seasons, or various tournaments, I would experience moderate to severe lag. And oddly enough, footballers, the only time that I would rarely experience lag was when I was playing online team play with a few friends. Now, in case you're wondering if I have a crappy internet connection, this is my configuration. 100 megabits upload, 100 megabits download on a fiber optics network, plus my console sits on the DMZ and the NAT is open. Let's face it, footballers. Lag has been an issue for the last several iterations of PES. Going as far as back, as 13 in my opinion. Between the regular lag and those losers that like to induce lag during a game, to be honest with you, I don't feel like Konami has taken the time to properly address the lag issue. Now, the big question here is, has the lag issue been addressed in PES 2016? Well, unfortunately, footballers, we won't know until when PES 2016 has been released on September 15 in the USA and on September 17 in Europe. And that's simply because the PES 2016 demo does not have one single feature where you could get a glimpse of what online gameplay could be like in the new PES. Now, let's talk about the collision engine. 
The collision engine or impact engine in PES 2015, although it was an improvement from PES 2014, in my opinion for bowlers, it was not up to par. And let me give you a couple of examples here. For instance, when two players would go for the ball at the same time, they would more often than not end up clipping or bumping into each other. And the result would be both players losing their balance, which is normally that's what's probably going to happen in real life. But what was bad was that both players would become completely unresponsive to input. And usually the first one that snapped out of that state of unresponsiveness, he would end up with the ball. Or if there was a player nearby, whether it was from your team or the other team, he would end up with the ball. And in more extreme cases, footballers, if two players collided into each other while battling for the ball, they would completely wipe out and the result could look like some kind of a contortionist act from Cirque du Soleil. And again, if there was a player nearby from either your team or the other team, he would end up with the ball. Now, if the ball was trapped in the contortionist act, then the contortionist act at times could turn into a dog pile. Now, the big question here is, has the collision slash impact engine been improved in PES 2016? Well, footballers, as far as I can tell from playing the demo, yes, it has. I would say that now players, for the most part, have a much more improvability to withstand challenges and to a degree, the harder physical contact while they're battling for the ball. Yes. Oh, looks like we're finally going to kick off over here. Yes, at times players will lose their balance during a challenge, making them more susceptible to errors before being able to regain their composure, but it's not as extreme as it was in PES 2015. Okay, now let's talk about defending. Actually, before we talk about defending, let's talk about this player that I'm controlling right now. That's Griezmann. He's so much fun in the PES 2016 demo. Come on, come on, come on. One nil. Oh, he is just simply amazing. I don't know what they've done to him, but he can turn on a dime. He's super fast. It's very good at dribbling. It's just really fun to play with. Anyway, now let's talk about defending. Defending in PES 2015 footballers was absolutely dreadful. Players didn't seem to really win the ball. Tackling, whether it was a standing tackle or a slight tackle, was more of a transfer of possession rather than, there you go, now I'm done by one. Well, footballers, it looks like the goalkeeper pairing the ball to an opponent's feet. It's still in PES 2016. And it was very prominent in 2015, and I was going to talk about that later, but I guess we took care of that. Uh, yep, unfortunately, they're still in there. Uh, hopefully, they're going to take him out or at least nerf him uh, when the full game comes out. Anyway, what I was saying is that tackling, whether it was a standing tackle or a slight tackle, it was more of a transfer of possession rather than a turnover in possession. And executing one of those delicious slight tackles, you know the ones that you scoop the ball right out of your opponent's feet, leaving him behind, wondering what the hell just happened? Well, those footballers... They were as difficult as the 12 labors of Hercules. That's right, footballers. Even when you try to time those tackles, more often than not, it would end up into a contortionist act. And as a parting gift for initiating and participating in the contortionist act, you would receive either a yellow card, or if the referee didn't like the contortionist act, you would receive a red card. And let's not forget that sometime your opponent could walk right through your defense as if your defenders that were just merely ghosts loitering nearby their graves. So, footballers, the big question here is, has defending been improved in PES 2016? Yes, it has. Thank the Lord. It has been improved. Now, a well-timed tackle, whether it's 10, 8, here you go, 1, 1, 1, 1, yes. There you go. Now we're back in business. As I was saying, now a well-timed tackle, whether it's sliding or standing, it has the ability to halt the progress of your position rather than just obstructing it. And now playing great defense can turn into a pivotal moment in the game, no matter where you are on the pitch. Kind of like that one right there where my player tackled the ball and gave the ball 
to the winger. That is a pivotal moment. It, it just makes defending in PES 16 a lot more fun than it was in 15. Actually, it wasn't fun at all in 15, to be honest with you. Because you know what? Now defending contributes to creating a more free-flowing match versus like more like uh, a segmented match. So the next question is, could defending be even be better? Yes, it could. And to be honest with you, one thing that I noticed, and maybe this is just in the demo, is that sometimes defenders, they sort of appear to be not aware of where they are or where the ball is. Or they'll overzealously run into each other or obstruct each other. So maybe those are kinks that are having to be worked on and maybe they won't be in the full release of the game. So we don't know. Anyway, guys, the next thing I want to talk about are the referees. And footballers, the referees have been quite inaccurate with their calls for several of the last iterations of PES, and not just last year in PES 2015. Now, some of the biggest issues I had with the referees in PES 2015 are the following, and by the way, these are not in a particular preferential order. Number one, the referees did not call off-the-ball incidents at all. Number two, they hardly ever call penalties or free kicks in your favor. And that's even in some cases where your opponent blatantly plowed into your player on a clear scoring opportunity, whether it was passing or finishing. However, footballers, you can rest assured that the referee wouldn't hesitate one second to call an incident like that against you. And I can honestly recall a few instances in which a free kick or a penalty was actually called in my favor. Number three, obstruction fouls are completely ignored. And that's probably because they're not even coded into the game, so the referees don't even know what those look like. Number four, yellow cards are given 95% of the times and mainly against you. Number five, players tripping on one another would be deemed a foul. And let me give you an example for this one. Let's say that you have one of your players going for a slide tackle challenge, your player wins the ball, but if one of the players from the opposition are nearby, which now is going for the ball, and he trips on your player and falls on the ground, a foul will be called against you, although your player never really committed a foul. And the list here could go on for bowlers, because those are just a few of the referees' issues I'm sure you guys have probably many more to add that you have encountered so but the main question here is have the referees been improved in PES 2016 well unfortunately no I don't think they have I think Konami completely overlooked the referees the referees in the demo are just as inconsistent as the referees in previous iterations of PES the issue that sticks out the most for me though is that the referees will allow the play to go on a bit excessively in the game when in reality the play should have been stopped. And what I mean by that is that it seems that no matter how bad a challenge is, the referees will not give a yellow card or a red card if he deemed the play to be advantageous. So guess what? The play goes on. Anyway, next footballers, I will talk about shooting, passing, dribbling, button lag, player responsiveness, player awareness, the ping pong effect, and the AI. And I'm only going to address whether or not they have been improved in PES 2016 so that we can wrap this up because I want to start talking about what it would be nice to have in terms of new modes slash features in futures, in future, pardon, in future iterations of PES. All right, footballers, let's talk about shooting in the PES 2016 demo. To me, shooting in the PES 2016 demo feels very nice outside the 18 yards box. However, I found that shooting at a closer range more often than not will have either one of these two outcomes, one yard inside the post or one yard outside the post. Also, shooting with a star player compared to a non-star player to me feels a tiny bit overpowering and one-on-one -on -one shots either against a CPU goalkeeper or a human goalkeeper will end up in the back of the net 90% of the times. 
Plus, the CPU opponents like to do chip shots very frequently and they're giving a lot of scoring opportunities from ridiculous rebounds. Remember what happened at the beginning of this game, footballers? And if you play on manual shooting, you will have a lot more shooting variations and you'll be able to pinpoint amazing shots. But the learning curve, footballers, it's mighty, mighty steep. And this wasn't a bad first half. It sure would be nice to have something more in terms of shooting variations in between the basic and the advanced shooting setting as far as I'm concerned. Also, crossing in the PES 2016 demo is definitely, definitely, infinitely better than it was last year. And passing in the PES 2016 demo, especially in level 1 footballers, feels more like last year's level 3 rather than the first level of assisted passing. Also, I found that more often than not, my passes wouldn't reach a specific player. Instead, my pass would go straight to the opposition, although my left stick was clearly pointed in the direction of the player that I was trying to pass the ball to. And that, footballers, applies to both simple ground passes and through ball passes. Also, another thing that I noticed with passing that I really don't care for is that when you play a direct ground pass to a player trying to move the ball up the pitch, the player that the pass was played to just stands there as if he's waiting for the freaking bus. He just doesn't move towards the ball or it takes way too long to react. In other words, he has zero sense of urgency and that footballer is not realistic at all and it's incredibly annoying to be very, very honest with you. Now, dribbling in the PES 2016 demo feels... Hang on. Oh, here we go. Here we go, Griezmann. Go, go, and yes, one-on-one, -on -one, that easy. Now watch the human train. That doesn't look real. Anyway, dribbling in the PES 2016 demo feels much more responsive, but with some players, maybe dribbling is a little too good for their own rating, footballers. In other words, some players that have high speed rating, but not a very high dribbling rating, uh, dribble almost as good as players with very high dribbling skills, such as Ribéry, to give you an example. Button lag in the PES 2016 demo is still present at times, but it's not as severe as it was in PES 2015. But then again, footballers, the demo is completely local, offline, so we are not going to know until the full release of the game on September 15 slash 17. Player responsiveness is better in the PES 2016 demo, but in my opinion, it could be better because sometimes players sort of feel like uh, they're a little bit spacey with the reactions and player awareness also is better in the PES 2016 demo, but at time, players don't really seem to be aware of the nature of the play. And what I mean by that is that you'll have players that uh, will overzealously run off sides prematurely or get in front of a teammate trying to finish and block his shot or they will completely forget where the ball is or they will collide against another teammate that already had the ball and basically um, dispossess them or obstruct them just to give you a few examples. And unfortunately footballers the ping pong effect is still in the game and it can happen pretty much all over the pitch and not just in one specific area of the pitch like the midfield. Now let's talk about the AI. Although this year the AI does a much better job in filling the gaps in the back or creating space while moving forward, I noticed that the CPU AI is always, always better at covering, applying pressure and filling the gaps while defending than my AI. It feels like my AI at times is a bit hesitant and the CPU AI is always on point every single time. And I'll be honest with you, I would love to see a more balanced approach on that one. Also, the CPU AI is able to pull off with laser-like precision long passes 98% of the time and they're able to read a play and inter... Here we go, Benzema, gone, gone, yes. 3-1, nice finish by Benzema. Anyway, what I was saying is that they're able to read a play and intercept the passes much better than my AI. Again, I would love to see a more balanced approach in this one as well. Because to be honest with you footballers, I feel that the CPU AI should be making more mistakes 
even in the superstar difficulty right now in the superstar difficulty the cpu ai barely makes any mistakes and to me doesn't feel very real now let's talk about stamina stamina in my opinion should have much more dire consequences than what they are right now if your opponent whether it's a human or it's the cpu runs around pressuring you for a great percentage of the game for example if your opponent in the first half constantly applied a ton of pressure and ran around the pitch like chickens with their heads cut off the consequences would have to be pretty dire for them in the second half their players 20 minutes into the second half should have basically zero stamina should be barely able to run and definitely should not be able to finish very easily their stats would have to be impacted by the choices they made earlier in the game making them much more prone to errors all over the pitch because guess what they are tired now the default game speed for bowlers in my opinion is a bit too fast and should be brought down a little bit not too much maybe one notch because i think it would make the game a little more enjoyable and footballers there is one more thing i wanted to mention before we moved on to the subject of what it would be nice to have as a new mode slash feature in future editions of pez and that is the matchmaking system in last year's online season unfortunately we won't know if last year's issues with the matchmaking system have been addressed by konami until pez 2016 comes out on september 15 slash september 17. however i truly hope that just like with the lag issues that i talked about earlier konami addressed the matchmaking system in pez 2016 because there is only one word to describe last year matchmaking system and that word is scandalous and if you played online last season, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. And look at Varane. He's going all the way. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. And goal. 4-1, boys and girls. <laughs> Almost too easy. Okay, so footballers, let's talk about what it would be nice to have as new feature slash modes in future versions of Pez. And footballers, I would really like you guys to drop a comment below and please let me know what you would like to have in terms of new feature slash modes in future versions of Pez. And also, I would love to know some of your own experience with the Pez 2016 demo. It would be incredible if you can do that. So here are my top four ideas. Number one, I would love, and I repeat, I would love to be able to co-op the Champions and Europa League against the CPU with an online friend and not just locally slash offline as it is possible to do now if you have a friend coming over to your place. Number two, in career mode, it would be very nice for us to be able to build our own stadiums. And as your team does better, you would be able to improve your stadium infrastructure, add new features to your stadium such as shops with your merchandise concession stands restaurants manage the advertisement boards in the stadium add training grounds near the stadium and so on you guys get the gist number three i would love to see in my club a versus com season with divisions in addition to the current my club sim only season with divisions and regular my club season with divisions and finally number four footballers it would be very nice and fun to be able to co-op, become a legend with a friend online. So guys, these are my top four ideas. Again, please drop a comment and let me know what yours are. I'm very, very curious. So footballers, to sum it all up, I believe that based on what I've experienced so far while playing the PES 2016 demo, the full version of PES has a lot of potential, but my biggest concern is whether or not Konami has taken any steps to greatly improve the online gaming experience, specifically the online lag issues and the online matchmaking system, because I would hate, and I repeat, I would hate for this game to instantly turn into a full offline game because of the poor online gaming experience. And of course, footballers, all of these questions will be answered once the game will be released 
on September 15 in the United States and on September 17 in Europe. So footballers, the final score is 4 to 1. Here are the statistics for the match and here are the ratings for the match. So footballers, I decided that I am going to give the Pez 2016 demo an 8.0 out of 10. Like I said, I believe this game has a lot of potential and I am very, very curious to see to what level Konami is going to take it. That's it for today, footballers. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please don't forget to do that before you leave. Also, if you've enjoyed today's video, I would very much appreciate you hitting that like button and go ahead, be generous, share this video with your friends. I am Retro Footballer and until the next time, remember, the game is on.